Hello, welcome to the second session of Geometry and Tacos. I will be presenting a joint work with Andre Morellano about killing forms on nicotinate groups. Uh, after recording the video, I realized that in the first part uh, the video was not included. So uh, you will see me back in the last part. Hope you enjoy. Hi, hello, welcome to the second session of Geometry and Tacos. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for the invitation for to participate in this second session with this uh, new um, format. And um, well, today I will talk about kidney forms and lipotomy groups. Uh, this is a joint work with Andre Morellano. And since the session is about new manifolds and soft manifolds and mixed and complex manifolds, my idea was to also to take this opportunity to describe a little bit uh, the geometry of nipotonic groups with left and right metrics and uh, uh, to, to show their properties and why they are interesting um, to consider their interesting environments to consider different problems in different, uh, in different geometry. So, uh, as I said before, uh, the video will be based in results of these two papers with Andre. And, um, but first of all, I would like to give the basic definitions uh, of killing forms and the examples on remaining manifolds in general. So, uh, for me, M will always denote uh, remaining manifold, and now that is the levity of the connection. Sometimes I will identify the tangent space with the dual of the tangent. And in this context, a differential form is a killing form if uh, it satisfies the equation here for the covariant derivative. This is equivalent to saying that the covariant derivative is skew-symmetric with respect, uh, sorry, the, the covariant derivative of the form is, is totally skew-symmetric. So these forms were introduced by Jan in the 50s and um, as a generalization of killing vector fields and they were generalized later as generalizations of conformal killing vector fields by, uh, as conformal killing forms. And in the 70s they started to being considered in, in physics uh, mostly because they were they are related to first integrals or the defined first integrals of the geodesic flow. So uh, one trivial thing is that uh, any parallel form on the Riemannian manifold is a killing form because they are closed and uh, uh, also uh, as I said before killing one form is they uh, sorry killing forms they come to generalize uh, killing vector fields and actually for killing one forms these concepts coincide because we take a, a differential one form and we make uh, we consider the the vector field which is the metric dual then uh, the one form is a killing form uh, being a killing form is equivalent for the vector field to be uh, a killing vector field so in this sense they they, they coincide but in greater degree we have of course, we have no uh, notion of killing vector field. So this is the, the extension. So um, these killing forms in greater degree, they, they can be linked to special, special geometries. And for instance, uh, in the context of nearly color manifolds, they have been considered by Semmelmann, for instance. And uh, for instance, if we have uh, an almost emission manifold with fundamental two form omega, then one can see that um, the condition for omega to being a killing two form is equivalent for the almost emission manifold to be a nearly killer manifold. And if moreover we are in dimension six, then the Hodge dual of the differential of omega is a, is a three form. And uh, this is always a killing three form. Okay, so uh, in this context also, it has been, if we consider the, the flag manifold, which is nearly Keller, then uh, it has been proved by Dotti and Herrera that any invariant killing two form has to be a multiple of uh, the fundamental two form. So we have uh, uh, some sort of uniqueness in this sense. 
and uh, but they are not the only ones uh, the only killing forms they they also describe killing two forms in other plug manifolds which do not omit nearly color structures and um, more recently, uh, Selman and Naviera, they prove a similar result. They proved that for strict nearly color manifolds of dimension six, which are compact, any three form which is killing has to be a multiple of uh, the Hodge dual of differential domain. And in view of Dottie and Herrera's result, they conjecture that something similar should hold for two forms, but uh, they were they prove it in a special case. So this this question is still uh, open in general. What happens for three forms? Killing three forms, they appear, for instance, in naturally reductive spaces. We know that if we have a homogeneous uh, manifold endowed with a gene variometric, and we consider uh, a reductive decomposition, then we say that M is naturally reductive with respect to G and this particular decomposition if this equation is verified, so the adjoint uh, com composed with the projection over M uh, is skew-symmetric. So in this case, uh, the torsion of the canonical connection, which is given by the bracket projected to M, is a killing three form. Uh, so three forms, they, uh, they sorry, killing three forms, they appear naturally on naturally reductive spaces. And moreover, also, uh, this all can be seen, for instance, in Semmelmann's paper, that if we have a G2 structure on a manifold of dimension seven, then uh, requiring phi to be killing is the same of, is the same condition as phi to be nearly parallel what is known as to be nearly parallel. So what happens in higher degree? Well, it is known that Sasaki manifolds possess uh, killing, uh, killing forms of greater degree. In fact, if we have psi uh, of the killing vector field defining the Sasaki structure, then we can take uh, the 2s plus 1 form uh, omega s here and uh, these these are always uh, killing forms okay and finally i would like to mention that uh, the space of uh, killing forms killing k forms on a, a Riemannian manifold uh, is uh, is the dimension of this space is always bind, bounded by this number which is always tamed by uh, manifolds of constant non-zero curvature. It's the same what happens with uh, killing vector fields, okay? So uh, this is uh, more or less the general setting. In general, it's not, um, it's not known when a manifold emits uh, killing forms or many manifold. And also a different problem is, uh, which is the dimension, how many, uh, how many, how big is the dimension of the space of killing forms? So in our case, uh, our objective is to study left invariant killing forms on Riemannian nipple tingling groups. And we are interested in both problems, uh, either existence when uh, a nipple tingling group admits uh, this kind of forms and also uh, which is if it admits which is the dimension of the space of uh, left invariant killing k forms. And uh, here I would like to stress also that we are interested on left invariant forms and not on all uh, killing forms. Okay, so um, now I will review some. Okay, so. I will present now. Okay, so so in order to to study left invariant killing forms, 
uh, I will present some more thoughts about the decomposition, the deron decomposition of mitotomy groups, and what happens with killing forms with respect to this decomposition. So, um, from now on, N is going to be a lead group with a left invariant metric G. That means that uh, left translations by elements of the group are isometries. Uh, I will denote with small n uh, the new algebra of the new group, and uh, G will still denote an inner product, uh, the inner product uh, induced uh, on the new algebra as a tangent uh, as a tangent at identity. And we also, I will also identify a vector field, a left invariant vector field with its value at identity as an element of the new algebra. So the Gaussian formula for the levitch fitta connection in this case on left invariant vector fields gives us um, this formula, where the add uh, star means the, the metric adjoint of the adjoint map uh, of the Lie algebra. This is all uh, very well known. And uh, one more thing is that left invariant differential forms on on the Lie group uh, will be identified also as exterior, form, exterior forms at the Lie algebra level. And uh, regarding the, the definition we had before about healing forms, then this translates directly as formula one uh, for left invariant forms and the left invariant element on the Lie algebra. Okay, only that in this case, this is the same formula, but D now de denotes the, the algebra differential. And equivalently, uh, alpha is going to be a killing form if and only if uh, the interior product of an element with, with uh, the decovariant de derivative of the form of this element is zero for every element in the Lie algebra. Okay? This was also equivalent. Uh, we took it in general for Riemannian manifolds. Okay? And um, I will use this characterization later. So uh, for the DRAM decomposition, I will consider N to be simply connected and also nilpotent. So uh, I consider the DRAM decomposition of, uh, of the Riemannian manifold and G. And uh, so I denote N0 the, the Euclidean factor, which could be uh, trivial. And Ni is um, are irreducible Riemannian manifolds. So, if I if we consider the tangent space of these manifolds at the identity, then I can identify them as uh, subspaces of the Lie algebra, which are orthogonal to n0, n1 up to nq, which gives me an orthogonal direct sum. And the fact that they are involutive it means and parallel distributions, it means that uh, each of the ni's are subalgebras of, uh, of n. In general, this will not be uh, a decomposition as a Lie algebra decomposition, but what we could prove is that, uh, well, first of all, is that not only that each of them is a subalgebra, but also any, any direct sum of them is subalgebra. And also, if we consider uh, n to be nilpotent, then uh, each of the ni is actually an ideal of n. So this says that the Durham decomposition gives us a decomposition of the Lie algebra as a direct sum of orthogonal ideals. So this means that n is uh, is given is is a sorry is a, is a Riemannian product of uh, nilpotent groups and that with left environment metrics. So let me introduce, uh, I will state this in, in the next slide, but let me introduce the concept of irreducible metric Lie algebra. So when uh, a metric Lie algebra is called irreducible, it means that we cannot write it as an orthogonal direct sum of ideals. So this uh, would be, let's say, the notion of the Rami reducible at the level of Lie algebras. And uh, I would like to point out that a Lie algebra may be, might be uh, a direct sum of two Lie algebras as uh, ideals, but uh, it could be irreducible asymmetric Lie algebra. OK, 
Okay, so these two concepts um, are not the same. Of course, that uh, if it is irreducible as a Lie algebra, then it will be irreducible as a metric Lie algebra for every uh, metric. So uh, what I said in the previous slide can be translated in this way. If we consider the Durham decomposition of an equivalently group with the left and right metric, then each of the factors is uh, isometric to a connected and simply connected irreducible nipotomy group involved with the left and right metric, uh, and zero is the trivial factor. And uh, in particular, n can be written as the direct sum of orthogonal ideals, where n zero is abelian, and each of the n i is nipotent, non abelian, and uh, the metric, the algebra n i g i, is irreducible for each of the i's of the indices. Okay, so um, so this result uh, says that if we have a Lie group and we consider the, the round factors, a nipotomy group, then each of the, the round factors are again in the same category of nipotomy groups and now with left environment metrics. So uh, the question now is if I consider a killing form on the big Lie group, uh, is it possible that uh, the killing form decomposes as uh, as killing forms in each of the factors? Okay, and that's why uh, I will present this technical result about killing forms on product of uh, Lipot and Lie groups. Oh, sorry, of products of Lie groups in general. Here uh, it's not necessary to be Lipot. So I will consider two uh, Lie groups, the left and right metrics and the product, uh, their product, uh, in doubt with the remaining product metric. So in the big uh, Lie group, the left invariant K form, uh, the space of the left invariant K form decomposes in this way. So a K form will be uh, the sum of all these alpha i's where alpha zero is a k-form on one of the Lie groups, alpha k is a k-form on the other Lie group, and uh, the things in the middle are wedge of, uh, are, well, linear combinations of wedges of things uh, of smaller degree in each of the Lie groups. So what, what we managed to prove is that uh, alpha, the form alpha is a killing form if and only if uh, the two extreme uh, forms, alpha zero and alpha k, are killing forms in the respective Lie groups, and each of the intermediate forms are parallel forms for, uh, for one up to k minus one. So this technical result um, allows us to reduce the problem of studying killing forms on a manifold by studying killing forms on, on the irreducible factors for nipotomy groups. So um, the reduction of the problem is the following. If we consider a nipotomy group which has this Durham uh, decomposition, then a left invariant killing form will have this form, will be alpha zero plus alpha one plus alpha q plus omega, and here, I'm sorry, the, the indices are not, this alpha i's are not the same as before. But they represent each alpha i will be either zero or a non-parallel killing form on uh, each of the factors. And omega will be uh, a parallel form on the full Lie group, on the big Lie group. Okay. But we also know that parallel forms on a product, uh, on this product uh, for the Durham decomposition, a parallel form is a fixed point of the allonomy. So uh, it means that it will be uh, decomposed as a linear combination of wedge products of parallel forms on the smaller Lie groups, uh, I mean, on each of the Durham factors. Okay. So uh, in order to study killing forms on N, we, won't, we will need to, to know what happens with killing forms on each of the irreducible factors and parallel forms on each of the irreducible factors, okay? 
So that's uh, what I call the reduction problem. So um, the reduction of the problem. So a first question is, which are the parallel forms on irreducible nepotomy groups? And what we, we managed to prove is, uh, is that So what we managed to prove is um, so what we managed to prove is that there are irreducible nepotomy groups that have no parallel forms other than the constants and the volume form. Okay, here is an nepotomy group uh, in Alabelia. Okay, so to prove this uh, result, we use the Berger uh, Simon polynomial theorem. So uh, with respect to parallel forms, what, what we can prove is that um, for irreducible nepotomy groups, they're only irreducible, uh, and now with left in parametrics, then the only parallel forms are the constants and the, the constant multiples of the volume form. And uh, for this, to prove this result, we use uh, the Alanoma theorem. First of all, uh, we should point out that uh, nepotomy groups with left invariant metrics are never uh, irreducible symmetrical spaces because they are not Einstein. This was already known by Milner uh, in his famous paper of the 70s, where he studied the curvature of left invariant metrics on nepotomy group, uh, sorry, on, on the groups in general. So if we are not, uh, if n is not uh, an irreducible symmetric space, then it lies, it has uh, one of the allonomies in the list of Berger Simon's theorem. So by contradiction, we assume that there exists uh, a parallel form of uh, non-extreme degree, let's say of intermediate degree. Then what happens? Then it can have. Then it, it needs to have um, a special allonomy. But since it's not Einstein, it, the only allonomy that we have left is the UM allonomy. And uh, so it means that the Lie group and that with the left invariant metric is a Keller manifold. So we denote omega a Keller form. In principle, we don't know that this is uh, left invariant or not. But actually, one can prove that omega needs to be left invariant. We assume that we have a parallel form, then it has to be left invariant. And this is because uh, we take the pullback by a left translation of, of omega, then it has to be a multiple of itself. And uh, so if we take the pullback of the nth power, it has to be the nth power of itself, but the metric is left invariant, so it has to preserve the volume form. So at the end, lambda is, uh, is one and uh, omega is left invariant, okay? So if we have a, a parallel form, then it has to be a Keller form and the Keller form needs to be uh, left invariant, but uh, it was already shown by Andrada and Dotti that uh, an hypotomy group with left invariant metric uh, never has uh, left invariant Keller structures. Okay, so this is a contradiction and uh, in particular we proved that we don't have any parallel form of this uh, intermediate degree and in particular these manifolds are never Keller. And uh, at this point, we should compare with the results of Benson and Gordon, who proved that uh, the compact quotient of an hypotonally group by a discrete uh, compact lattice is never Keller unless the manifold, uh, unless n is abelian. Okay, in this case, we couldn't use directly this result because we wanted to prove uh, that there were no Keller forms on the 
on the nipotony group. So uh, it, it could include um, nipotony groups not admitting any lattice, for instance. Okay, so this is why we needed to reduce uh, to work in this case. Okay, so um, now the reduction of the problem. Now we know that we don't have any uh, parallel form unless it is a volume form on irreducible nipotony groups. So now the reduction of the problem is uh, more reduced, let's say, more sim simple. And uh, so if we consider the, the run decomposition of uh, N, then a left invariant form will have the form as before, alpha one plus alpha q plus omega, where alpha i is again either zero or a non-parallel killing form. But now omega is only to be, is only uh, going to be a linear combination of wedge products of volume forms and uh, any k form on the, on the Killian factor, okay? So uh, we already know who are the, the parallel forms giving, giving uh, uh, killing forms. And now we need to study uh, killing forms, non-parallel killing forms on each of the irreducible factors, which are not the Euclidean factor. Okay, so um, in order to, to study or to see what happens with the uh, killing forms on irreducible factor, let me first say what is known about uh, the, the killing forms uh, on nipotony groups uh, with respect to those I, I mentioned at the beginning as examples. Okay, so uh, what happens with left invariant killing one forms? These are, as I said, metric duals of killing vector fields and killing vector fields on the isometry group for nipotony groups uh, with left invariant metrics is very well known, the isometry group uh, this was proved by Wolf and Wilson. Um, the isometry group is always the semi-direct product of the group of isometric automorphisms and uh, the group of left translations, which is uh, n itself. So the the algebra of killing vector fields is uh, the semi-direct product, product of Q-symmetric derivations with the Lie algebra n, where now n represents uh, right invariant vector fields. So those uh, vector fields in the large of killing vector fields, uh, which are also left invariant, are only those corresponding to elements in the center. So remember that for Nicolton groups, the center is always uh, non-trivial. So for left invariant killing one forms, we already know in this case that they correspond to elements in the center, so uh, we have nothing to do for one forms. For two forms, they, they started to being studied by Barberis, Dotti, and Santillan in 2012, where they studied the case of uh, two-step nipotony groups, uh, which are uh, nipotony groups for which the derived algebra is non-trivial and is contained in the center. And in this case, they give uh, necessary and sufficient conditions for any two form to be killing. They, they describe this space <clears throat> sorry, the conditions for for being in this space, and uh, I will review this uh, this characterization later. So that's why I am not including it here. What happens with killing three forms? Uh, I said I mentioned that um, naturally reductive spaces gave examples of uh, killing three forms. And the naturally reductive structures on nipotent groups, they were studied by Caroline Gordon and Jorge Lauret. And uh, I will summarize their results here. Uh, first of all, it is known that a nipotently group which is naturally reductive must be two step nipotent. And uh, so for a nipotent, two step nipotently group, um, I will use this notation. If we have, a, well, the center, as I said, is always not trivial, so I can take the orthogonal complement, which I denote by V, then we always have uh, this uh, J map defined from its center to the 
skew-symmetric maps of P, so every set defined in J set by this equation, okay? Because the Lie bracket of two elements in the Lie algebra always lies uh, in n prime, which is contained in the center. So this inner product is well defined. So I can define this J set map, okay? So any natural reductive uh, nilpotent group is two step, and I can use this notation. Moreover, Remember that the definition of natural reductive spaces depended on uh, the reductive decomposition and the isometry uh, group uh, that we take uh, as I denoted it as G. So uh, in the case of nipotently groups, uh, we don't have this ambiguity because it, one can show that a two-step nipotently group without the Kluge factor, which means that uh, J is injective, is naturally reductive if and only if it is naturally reductive with respect to the full isometric group and this particular reductive decomposition. Okay, and this is proved uh, by using the, the description of the isometry group which we saw uh, moments ago. Okay, the reductive decomposition here, notice that is given by this uh, M, where is given by x plus z plus gz, where gz is a skew symmetric derivation extending j of z. Notice that it's not always the case for an hypotenuse group, a two-step hypotenuse group, that the jz is going to be always uh, extended to a skew symmetric derivation. It's actually something that happens in the natural reductive case. Okay. So, and finally, uh, N without the Clinian factor is naturally reductive. Using these results, we can prove, uh, one can prove uh, that um, it is naturally reductive if and only if the J set is a subalgebral SOV and the map defined by uh, G minus one of the bracket of two elements, remember that J is, um, is injective, this is a skew symmetric map uh, on the center. Okay, so this is a summary of these results, uh, the results of Gordon and Laurette. And uh, using this J map, one can see that the Keeling tree form associated to the natural reductive structure is given by J and gamma, where J is, is the J map I defined before, only that we can see it as a three form on the Lie algebra. And gamma is defined by uh, this J minus one of, by the skew symmetric map I said before, uh, we had defined when the, when the, the metric is naturally reductive, okay? So, what happens with uh, killing forms of greater degree? Well, uh, the examples I gave were on constant curvature, which is not uh, the case. And um, also in Sasakian, for Sasakian structure. And uh, well, what happens in, in the Sasakian uh, structures for nipotent groups actually it was proved by Andrada, Pino, and Bezzoni that uh, the Heisenberg group is the only one carrying uh, left invariant Sasakian structures. So in this case, uh, the dimension of n prime and center is one, and actually the J set map I defined before verifies uh, is a complex structure. And uh, uh, the omega s I defined at the beginning as psi wedge uh, d uh, psi uh, to the s is exactly this uh, 2s plus 1 form. Okay, so these are these are all uh, examples of killing forms on nipotent groups uh, that we already know when knew when when we started working. So in this uh, final part, let me tell you our, about our contributions to the study of killing forms, and uh, we restricted ourselves to two step nipotent groups. In this context, uh, what we obtain is first a characterization of the Lie groups admitting either killing two forms or three forms. And um, 
And secondly, in order to study high degree killing forms, uh, we restricted ourselves to uh, the case of the dimension of the center to be at most two dimensional. In both cases, we obtain that whenever the lead group is dynamic reducible, then the space of killing forms it was at most or is at most one dimensional. So uh, these are all multiples of a, a given killing form. So uh, which are our methods? Uh, well, as I said, we work with uh, two-step Nicholson groups. So the Lie algebra can be decomposed as the sum of the center and its orthogonal complement. So this allows us to decompose the space of K forms in this way and write the components of any K form as uh, in, with respect to this decomposition uh, as we denote it as alpha L. So the first um, main result is uh, a system of equation that the components of alpha need to verify uh, in order for alpha to be a killing form. So if we consider orthogonal basis, then alpha is uh, a K form, is going to be a killing form if and only if it satisfies uh, the components alpha L satisfy this system. Notice that the first one is only an equation on the K minus one component, but the other one are, is a, these are equations, <coughs> sorry, K equations, uh, which involve the L minus one and the L plus one component for every L from zero to K minus one. Here, the J set star means the, the action of the skew symmetric map J set uh, extended to forms. So how do we prove this result? Actually, what we use is the de Castle formula in order to obtain um, the behavior of the levitch beta connection with respect to the decomposition of N and B plus L. And uh, what we do is to write the equation for alpha to be a killing form. As I said before, this is equivalent to uh, the interior product of y interior nabla y alpha to be zero and we write y as uh, x plus z with respect to the decomposition v plus z and then this is a k minus one form and in order to be zero then uh, we project it uh, into the co this component and in order to be zero then each component has to be zero and if you make the computations the components actually are those appearing in the proposition, okay? So this is, uh, let's say, our main technical result. So now uh, what we do is to use this proposition in the case of two, three forms, and then for any K for the center of dimension less than or equal to two. And this is how we obtain the results. So uh, recall that killing two forms uh, can be decomposed as alpha zero, alpha one, alpha one, alpha two, with respect to the decomposition in the previous slide. Notice that the subindex zero, one, and two uh, always denotes the degree of the form of the component on the V part. So uh, by using the metrics, since these are two forms, we can see alpha two as an element in SLV, alpha zero as an element in SLZ, and alpha one is a skew symmetric map taking z to v and vice versa. Now for killing three forms, we have a similar decomposition, but now uh, these alpha zero, one and two and three, these are not uh, no longer two forms, so we cannot see it as uh, skew symmetric maps, but they, have, uh, they belong to this space. So the first consequence of the proposition in the previous slide is that if we have a king form of degree uh, at most three, then alpha one and alpha three are zero. Even though they, they belong to different subspaces, they, they are both zero. So the question now is uh, when alpha, when uh, a certain form written as alpha two plus alpha zero is the killing K form for k equal to two and three. So the first result is uh, for k equal to two. And we managed to prove that 
uh, either I'm irreducible uh, Nipotin B group admits uh, killing two form if and only if it, it admits an orthogonal B invariant complex structure. And in this case, uh, the space of the left invariant killing two forms is one dimensional, as I said before. So, how do we prove this? Uh, from the proposition, the conditions in the proposition can be written as, uh, as this one. So, alpha 2 plus alpha 0 is a killing form if and only if uh, they behave in this way as endomorphisms with respect uh, to the Lie bracket. Okay, and these conditions are called BDS because these are exactly the conditions that Barberis, Dotti, and Santishan they obtained in their paper of 2012. So this condition was already known. Uh, we only reobtained it from from our system. So uh, if alpha is killing, then this condition plus the fact that the Lie algebra is irreducible means that there is a multiple, there is a constant such that the endomorphism defined in this way is uh, actually an orthogonal complex structure, which is the invariant. So this means that if we use alpha zero, if alpha is killing, then alpha zero and alpha two define uh, an orthogonal complex structure. And the invariant means uh, this, this condition, which actually implies that the Lie algebra is complex. So the Lie algebra must be complex in order to have killing forms. And conversely, if uh, we have an orthogonal uh, B invariant complex structure J, then we can uh, define alpha zero and alpha two for mu equal to one. And this is going to satisfy the BDS condition because of the invariance and and uh, so um, this is going to define a killing form. So uh, killing forms are, killing two forms are in one-to-one -one correspondence with, well, not one-to-one, -one, uh, are in correspondence with a uh, beam variant of our complex structures. And uh, the last part, uh, the fact that the space of killing forms is two-dimensional, um, is obtained by proving that uh, a metric two-step two Nipotent Lie algebra uh, endowed with a metric admits at most one B invariant orthogonal structure whenever it is uh, irreducible. So, uh, sorry, at, least at most one up to multiple, up to plus minus one. Okay? So, so any killing two form has to be a multiple of the constructed in this way. Let me uh, just uh, remark here that the killing form alpha two plus alpha zero is never a complex form, okay? Because we always need to divide by three. So these two forms never come from nearly color structures, for instance. A few remarks before uh, giving this slide is uh, first of all that a, a similar result was already proved by also uh, Andrada and Dotti. Uh, they proved actually using different methods that uh, killing two forms are uh, linked to orthogonal B invariant complex structure in this way. And also they proved a uniqueness uh, in some cases. And uh, secondly, for uh, the uniqueness of orthogonal B invariant uh, uh, complex structures, it was proved uh, for any Nipotent C degree, not only for two step, by uh, Dere uh, also this year, very recently. So uh, this is uh, for two forms. So we were able to characterize, uh, as I said, okay, killing two forms appear only on complex Lie groups and they are all given by uh, this construction. So what happens with uh, killing three forms? We saw before that natural reductive spaces admitted killing three forms. What we proved is that whenever we have a killing three form, it has to be uh, a three form coming from a natural reductive space. If uh, we are in a Derami reducible case. So um, 
at the RAM irreducible nipotomy group that needs a non zero two in three form if and only if it is naturally reductive. We know that there is no ambiguity because it's always naturally reductive with respect to the isometry group. And in this case, again, uh, there are no other killing three forms, they are all multiple of the uh, torsion of the canonical connection. And how do we prove this? Again, we have, we know that a killing form has to be alpha 2 plus alpha 0, and uh, we use the proposition before with the equations, we only write them in this uh, nicer way. So what we have here is um, a system of equation here should be alpha 0, sorry, in the second equation, is alpha 2 plus alpha, uh, alpha 2 plus alpha 0, the form we are studying, okay? So we need to verify this condition, this uh, system two and three. So uh, recall that alpha two is, uh, is a form, is a three form belonging to lambda two of V tensor Z. So it can be seen in particular as an element from Z to SOV. So if we use uh, formula three and some linear algebra arguments, we obtain that alpha two has to be J, the J map defined in the Lie algebra, composed with a certain symmetric matrix uh, in Z, okay? This is, um, this is a, a nice result. Actually, this is a general result. If we have uh, some matrices, uh, Zt here is a, a basis of the center. So if we have some matrices, uh, let's say AT and BT verifying this equation, then one can prove that the BTs are, are linear combination of the ATs. This is also because the Js that they are always uh, linear independent because of the irreducibility and uh, so we obtain this matrix B here. But now, since this B will define the composition of the Lie algebra unless it is uh, the identity, so irredu irreducibility implies that B needs to be the identity. So at the end, we obtain that if we have a killing form, then alpha two has to be exactly J. And so alpha is J plus alpha zero, alpha zero is a three form in the center. And uh, now we use, we put uh, all this information in the second equation. Uh, now alpha two is exactly J. So this is a bracket of J set, J set prime. And this is alpha zero here. So what we obtain is actually that alpha zero viewed as a two one form is exactly defined by this. So J of Z is a subalgebra of SOV and alpha zero is defined in this way. So we obtain at the end that if we have a killing form, then it has to be uh, the natural reductive, then the Lie algebra of the Lie group is natural reductive and the three form is the one uh, we already saw before. This is J plus, uh, the form defined by the inverse image of the bracket. Oh, sorry, this is J set, J set prime. Okay, so, and again, uh, they are all, uh, any three form is of this form, so they are all multiple of the same thing. So uh, these two characterizations of two and three forms, of spaces of two and three forms, lead us to a cute result that uh, maybe it's not natural, it was not natural to ask whether natural reductive Lie groups could be complex Lie groups. But uh, for us, uh, it was a question of uh, when, if it, it is possible for an important Lie group to admit uh, non-zero killing two forms and at the same time non-zero killing three forms, and the answer is no. We showed that the natural reductive and the complex work are disjoint. So a natural reductive two-step nipotent Lie group and now the left invariant metric never admits uh, an orthogonal B-invariant complex structure. So for a nipotent Lie group, either we have two forms, killing two forms, or uh, killing three forms, but we cannot have both. So uh, let me present 
now then uh, a low dimensional classification of the isomorphism classes of two step Nipotomy algebras of dimension P, admitting at least one inner product carrying non zero killing K forms for K equal to two and three. Here we consider non abelian. So uh, here the list is of Nipotomy groups and uh, not, not necessarily irreducible, let's say. So uh, here, uh, we know that there is a metric where it admits killing two forms, for instance, the product metric, let's say, and it is always the product metric. So we have a two form coming from the R2, here coming from R2, and H3C is the isomer, complex isomer. Now it admits uh, then a, a killing two form, which is non-parallel, and uh, well, we can see the list here. The same here for k equal to three. We have, uh, uh, we know that Heisenberg Lie groups they have uh, natural reductive metrics here, and three two means the three step sorry the two step Nipotomy Lie algebra on two gener on three generators. This is of dimension six. And um, let me just also say that uh, this is a classification of isomorphism classes. There are the algebras admitting more than one um, inner product with, um, let's say, non-equivalent inner product and both admitting killing forms. Okay, so at least one metric is admitted. Okay, so this is for two and three forms. Uh, let me now uh, continue with the uh, killing forms of higher degree, what happens? First of all, we can see the center of dimension one. The idea for us was try to, uh, to obtain similar classifications, for instance, what happens, what can we say about um, the geometry, or what would be the geometric uh, characterization of Nipotomy groups carrying uh, killing core forms, or uh, etc. cetera. Could it be? But uh, well, we obtain um, different results in for k greater than four. Okay, for the center of dimension one, we are always in the case of Heisenberg Lie algebra uh, with a certain metric. So we take a unit vector in uh, in the center, and uh, the J said uh, endomorphism of D, which is symmetric. So now the space of K forms decomposes as uh, this one, okay? We only have two components for a K form, the K and the K minus one. And the K minus one, since it belongs to here, we can write it as set wedge gamma with gamma uh, a form in V. So the first lemma is obtained again from the proposition uh, at the beginning. And we know that alpha is a killing form. If it is killing, then alpha k has to be zero and alpha k minus one, or let's say gamma here, needs to verify this equation for. Okay, so we are left with this equation. And uh, what one can prove is that uh, a k minus one form verifies this equation. Uh, if and only if gamma is of an even degree and uh, it is a multiple of the wedge of J set, okay? So it's clear that uh, the wedge of the J set uh, admit, sorry, solve this equation, but uh, by induction, one can prove that these are the only solutions. And this is, uh, this could be considered as a linear, uh, sorry, as, as a multilinear, uh, multilinear algebra problem. Uh, general. So, um, so at the end, what we obtain is that um, a killing k form on the highest symbol algebra is always zero if k is even. So we don't have killing forms of even degree. And for odd degree, they are all a multiple of z wedge uh, gamma, this, uh, the wedge of j z where set is a unit length vector in the center. 
So uh, here, notice that this form is similar to the one arising from the Sasakian structure on the highest Bailey group, but in this case, the JZ map need not to be a complex structure. So uh, at the end, we obtain uh, similar uh, killing forms, but they do not always come from uh, a Sasakian structure. And these are all, these are all possible killing points. Okay, so the end is uh, for dimension of the center equal to two. We were expecting to get more forms, but following a similar approach, we obtained that if the Lie algebra is irreducible and it has two dimensional center, then any killing form uh, of degree between four and one dimensional less than the dimension of the Lie algebra uh, vanishes. So uh, for dimension of the center two and irreducible, we, uh, we go back to the previous cases. We only have a killing one, two, three forms on the top uh, form, which is the volume form. So we didn't obtain anything new for this case. And uh, I have to say that again, we, we we had this system of the beginning, and usually these systems are involve a lot of equations and stages uh, of computations and multilinear algebra and the algebra um, techniques, let's say. And uh, at the end, we arrived that there is none. Uh, if it is irreducible, if it is reducible, then we can use the previous. Uh, the run decomposition, let's say, as I called it before, the reduction of the problem, and uh, the killing forms of the Heisenberg Lie algebra. Namely, uh, if we have a two step nipotent metric Lie algebra with two dimensional center, if it is um, irreducible, uh, sorry, reducible and can be written as a sum of two Lie algebras, we use the, we impose this condition for the dimension of the center. Uh, sorry for their dimensions. Then the space of killing K forms can be described as follows. Notice that if it is, if it, the center is two dimensional and it is reducible, then both of them need to, be, N1 and N2 need to have center of dimension one. So they are high some of the algebras. So a killing form on the product comes from, um, from killing forms in the factor. And we know that, for instance, there are non uh, killing forms on the high symbol the algebra of even degree. So that's why, uh, okay, K1 killing one forms come from the center, as uh, we said before. Killing K forms for K even is zero. And for K odd, we need to be careful with the dimension uh, of both of them. If we are in an odd dimension, such that, uh, sorry, in an odd degree k, such that the which is smaller than the dimension of the Lie algebra, then we have a two dimensional spaces. Otherwise, we have two uh, one dimensional. And if we are in the top degree, we have one dimensional. Okay, so uh, these are the results. And uh, well, this is more or less what I want to, to talk about uh, in this video. Uh, let me say that, uh, in general, our techniques, this, um, this system of equation for uh, any k and the dimension of uh, the center greater than 2 uh, was uh, quite hard to, to solve. So um, we don't know if we can continue this, uh, this uh, using this system for larger degree, at least in uh, in the general case, let's say, maybe we can consider smaller uh, other, other Lie algebras or other restrictions. So, okay, uh, this is the end, and I hope to see you on GitHub and on the coffee break. Thank you.